This episode is brought to you by Silly.com. Based in Maui, Hawaii, Silly.com believes psychedelic medicine is the future of mental health. For the millions of people worldwide struggling with mental illness, access to therapeutic plant medicine is a ray of hope. Silly.com is here to share these therapies with the world. Because in the current medical health landscape, certain therapies are not working and the problem is only getting worse. They believe that the plant got it right. That is why Silly.com is focused on natural psychedelic therapies that create better, safer treatments and will help speed up the FDA approval and legalization process so people can get more effective help faster. They call this the new standard of pharma. Mahalo to Silly.com for supporting the podcast and check them out on their website. That's P-S-L-Y dot com. Aloha, everybody. Welcome to the Hawaii Verse podcast, a podcast that supports local by waiting for your favorite song to play on the radio and holding up your phone to record it so you can set it as your ringback tone. I'm your host, Kamaka Diaz, and I remember waiting for Me Love by Sean Kingston to come on the radio so I could have the coolest ringtone when people called me. The good old days. We got another episode for you today, and I'm really excited to talk stories with this person, so let's get right into it. Our guest today is a Filipino Irish sales and communication veteran from the island of Oahu. She is the market president and GM for Summit Media Honolulu, an American broadcasting company which features local radio stations such as Crater 96.3, Hawaiian 105, KCCN FM 100, Power 104.3. Shout out to our boy Michael Banks and much more. This boss lady has a career spanning more than 20 years, previously holding positions at Hawaii News Now, iHeart Media, and Hawaiian Airlines. She is a wife, a mother to four kids, and is a cancer survivor. She is deeply rooted in Hawaiian culture and values, and I am happy to share her story with you all today. Her name is Patty Ponimoy. Aloha, Patty. Welcome to the podcast. Aloha. You thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you for being here, even though you work here. <laughs> thank you for coming all the way over here. <laughs> It's a long walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We usually have brief interactions just yeah. in the hallway. And then a couple of weeks ago, I just saw you in the hallway. Yes. Said, Aloha. I think Jordan was surprised because, you know, we just we saw each other. We gave the honey on the cheek. Right. And then I told him, oh, yeah, that's the that's the president. That's a GM over here. And he's like, wait, what? I think it's not it's not a super common thing to see people at a very high like level or like corporate job to be so casual. I feel like that's why Jordan was a little surprised. True. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it, I think for us, it's different here. Mm -hmm. We have a small crew. We're tight-knit crew. Um, but it's also the local, you know. It's, it's just a local, local way. Yes. You know, and it's, you don't, you don't manage from that way. You mm -hmm. don't run a company from that way if you want everybody tight-knit and close, so. Yeah, that's why I was stoked when I heard that, you know, they promoted you to this position because we yeah. have a local person, somebody who understands the culture right. running, you know, a local radio station. Right. Uh, that's that's so important, you know. Yeah. yeah. So it, I, I, I was just super fun. stoked. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm excited to get to know your story a little bit more. You're trapped here for the next hour, so <laughs> we got a lot to get into. I don't know into. about trapped. <laughs> I, I get guess. a break from the work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, trapped at me at least. Yes. <laughs> All right, so before we get into everything, I got to know where are you from, where are you grad, and what was it like growing up? Okay, let's see. I am from Kaneohe. Oh, I um, have been in Kaneohe since coming to Hawaii in 73. I was five years old at the time, so you can do the math. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to, I graduated from St. Francis, cheered for St. Louis. Oh. Uh, so it's that typical, <laughs> you know, cheerleader. My husband is a graduate from St. Louis. Did you meet him at St. Louis? Yes. Oh, um, your high school yeah, sweethearts? Uh, well, we weren't dating in high school. Oh, okay. We were good friends in high school. We started dating our senior, the end of our senior year. Okay. So, nice. Yeah. Wow. It's interesting. So, so you were a cheerleader. He was a football player. He played ba uh, oh, baseball. Ba baseball player, okay. Baseball and basketball. Baseball and basketball, yeah. okay. When we met, he was playing basketball. Okay, nice. Yeah. And what, what was your first impression? Uh, well, you know, we started off as good friends. Mm -hmm. He was actually dating a really good friend of mine. <laughs> so I knew, all the, I knew all the behind the scenes stuff by the time we started dating. <laughs> so no, and you know, it, it's, it's, it's great. It's weird because 
cheering for St. Louis and dating and marrying, you feel like you're part of the school. And sometimes you have to remind yourself, I went to an all girl school. Yeah. 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 But it's good. Yeah. That's usually what happens for people who aren't familiar with these schools on Oahu. Right. Right. St. Francis and Sacred Hearts, they're all girl schools. And they're. Saint, Sacred Hearts is n- near St. Louis. Right, it's Saint right Francis. up the street from Sacred Hearts. St. Francis is in Manoa. In Manoa, which so it's a little further. This past year, they closed down. Oh. So now I don't have a grade school or a high school. Because oh, no. St. Anne's in Kanyo, he closed <laughs> down also. Wow, all the saints. So, yeah, yes, yeah. nice good old Catholic yeah, schools. But, but usually, you know, St. Francis or Sacred Hearts, they, they have like a... A brother school, right. I guess that's what, I don't know right. if that's the term. So at the time uh, when we were in school, St. Louis cheerleaders were chosen from Star of the Sea, St. Francis, or Sacred Heart. So those were the okay. three sister schools. For St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then usually... Damien too, but I mean... Oh, obvious, yeah, yeah, Damien. Yeah, yeah, but obviously St. Louis. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then usually for proms or anything, they usually right, go with right. like, each other, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I went... I went to a Sacred Hearts prom one time. Shout out to my friend Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what, what was it like growing up in uh, kind of? You said you moved here when you were five years old. Yes. From where? I was born in Japan. Oh, what? I was born in Japan, Okinawa, Japan. My dad was in the service, retired by the time I was oh, born. Okay. But um, we moved here in 73, and it was great. Uh, Kaniohi at the time was very different from what mm-hmm. it is now. Woodward Mall was just tall weeds. Mm. It wasn't even developed. Um, it was it was good playing outside. You know, we didn't do the video games. We didn't do kind of dating myself. Mm-hmm. But it was good. It was carefree times. We played outside. You knew it was time to come home just because the sun was going mm-hmm. down. Yeah. Um, there were no cell phones, so parents just yelled outside or you know if you growing up catching the bus to sandy's you just knew when you had to be home Mm -hmm. um it was good i look at the kids now or even just raising my own kids and very different from Mm -hmm. how we grew up yeah you know now you got to push kids to go outside you had to push us to come inside i know that's yeah such a weird contrast it is yeah i'm I'm very grateful because i was born 93 so Mm -hmm. i i kind of had a both worlds Mm -hmm. so i grew up without social media without cell phones and then when i got a little older maybe when i was like 10 or 11 we started to get cell phones Mm -hmm. but we were still so so into you know climbing trees right playing outside playing with the kids in the neighborhood and then you know, ha- hearing your mom say, hey, yeah. dinner's ready. Yeah, or like sending, exactly. somebody, sending like our little sibling over to our, our neighbor's house being like, hey, it's Kamaka and Micah here. They right. got to come home for dinner. Right. Stuff like that. And it's so great. Yeah. yeah you just you don't see that as much these days. Um, I mean, I did play video games when I was young, but we were always like, you didn't have to convince us to go play outside. Right. Right. Yeah. And now I find because I have my grandkids a lot mm-hmm. and it's bribing them to go outside and play you know oh it's too it's hot nice. or it's, we loved getting yeah. sweaty and running around mm-hmm. outside and now it's pushing them okay turn off the video games turn yeah. off the tv go outside but now it's the phones can i see your phone mm-hmm. you know we didn't have all of that so yeah. it was i like the old days you know yeah i mean sammy i mentioned mm-hmm. it in the opening about how how the, the simple things that we are, we had to do, like mm-hmm. listening, I would listen to the radio and when cell phones became a thing, you could get those ring back tones mm-hmm. and uh, I would, you know, you had, you had to buy them or you could just record them and, you know, I didn't have a lot of money so I would just wait by the radio, wait for my favorite song to come on, play it and then I would feel like I was so cool. I'd borrow somebody else's phone, call my own phone, right, listen right, back to it. Right. And, yeah, I'm so cool. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I chuckled when you did the introduction because in our days, we would request a song and then you have to sit by the radio and wait oh, yeah, for it yeah, to come yeah. on. But we had cassette tape. So to record it, you had to press your cassette tape Oh, so that's what you would do? You'd, you'd yeah, record you radio to, songs on a cassette to listen well, back to it? Well, like when it played on the radio mm-hmm. to record it, you'd have to use your cassette radio tape recorder, whatever it was called back then, and record it so that you could play it back. Wow. We didn't have cell phones that we could record it mm-hmm. with. 
Dang, and then you crazy. just play back all the time. Yeah. Or if you wanted to learn the lyrics to a song, mm-hmm. you had to record it with a cassette tape and play yeah, it back. You could, you you're writing down, it down. Right, and r- right. Look up the lyrics. Right, yeah. right. Wow, that's so interesting. So after you graduated from mm-hmm. St. Francis, what did you do after that? So I was going to Canon Business College and then got a job with Hawaiian Airlines. Mm. So my first job with Hawaiian Airlines was in sales and promotions. And basically, I traveled the world dancing hula. Oh, were you a I was on the promo dancer? team. I was on the promo team. And it was one of the best jobs, best way to see the world at the time. I think now they do their promotions teams mm-hmm. differently. They use flight attendants or, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, it was, I was hired just to travel the world and dance hula and promote Hawaii. Wow. So how did you get into dancing hula? Because you, so you're Irish, Filipino, so mm-hmm. you never grew up with Hawaiian blood, but you grew up around the Hawaiian culture? When we moved here in 73, my dad, he, his thinking was he didn't think girls in Hawaii shouldn't know how to dance hula. Mm. So one of the first things he did was he found... Um, at the time, it was Keola Laulani Hula Studio, which was run by Mary Wong, Auntie Mary Wong, um, who is Auntie Aloha's mom, or was Auntie Aloha's mom. So I took hula from her from when I was five, and my dad got very, very involved mm. with all the activities and everything that was going on. So Auntie Mary eventually got sick and passed away, and... Auntie Aloha took over. Mm-hmm. And, and that's Aloha Deliri. Aloha Deliri. Yeah. And ever since then, I mean, it was just, she became like the Hanai mom. I did everything. I danced in all the shows on weekends from a very young age, dancing at like King's Alley and Bishop Museum. Um, and over time, just got really engrossed in hula and learned everything and always spent my time with her. She would pick me up because I couldn't drive, drop me off, you know, and we'd go to shows. Um, So she taught me a lot about the culture, the traditions, um, not just hula and, you know, how to make lei, how to make tea leaf skirt. Mm -hmm. Um, So after high school, that job with Hawaiian Airlines came up and I applied and got it and it was great. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is after you graduated college? mm -hmm. Uh, No, I never, I left college to go to... Oh, okay. uh, to work for Hawaiian Air. Yeah, it was just this mm-hmm. opportunity came up and you right. jumped on it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, similar to like Lanai. Yes. Where he was in college and the, the radio. Yeah. Like came up and then, I feel like that same with Micah. Is, 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 is this a radio thing? Uh, you know what? I don't know. Maybe that's why we ended up where we're at. <laughs> but you know, working for Hawaiian Air in in that particular position, you don't realize it at the time. I was eighteen, mm-hmm. nineteen. Um, you're traveling the world dancing hula, which is what I love to do. You're getting paid to do what you love to do, but you don't realize it until later. I was traveling, talking about Hawaii, promoting Hawaii. And at the time that wasn't top of mind. I was young. I just, Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't realize it until later. Here I am representing Hawaii via Hawaiian Airlines Mm -hmm. because you're pretty much going to world trade fairs. You know, every November it was in London Um, And then we would go East Coast, Japan, West Coast. You know, it was living out of a suitcase for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Dang. So did you travel before that at all? No, my dad, um, back then, summer vacation was pretty much three months long. You know, not Mm -hmm. so short like now. And my dad always took us for a summer trip. Okay. He made sure that even though we lived in Hawaii, he wanted us to travel and see the different states, see the seasons and everything. Mm. So that was the extent of traveling, but never anything abroad mm-hmm. like I did with Hawaiian so Airlines. So were, were you excited to leave or, you know? Yes. Because, you know, I feel like there's two different sides. People that mm-hmm. just want to get out and people that never want to leave. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's no in-between. <laughs> yeah. No, I love traveling. Mm-hmm. And I loved um, seeing the different cultures. I mean, it was crazy from... You know, just even going to the Samoas, American and Western Samoas are so different, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, to Tonga, to Japan and China. Um, So I love traveling. Mm -hmm. And there was a time when I was younger where I thought, okay, 
I'm going to move, you know, I'm going to move to the mainland or move somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But of course you get older and you start a family and mm -hmm. you want to raise your family here because of the local traditions yeah. and the culture. Yeah, I, I don't think I could ever raise my family anywhere else because of the childhood that I have. And, right. You know, especially with the culture and then mm -hmm. I speak Hawaiian as well. You can't speak Hawaiian anywhere else or, mm -hmm. you know, perpetuate as much as we can here. Mm -hmm. So the, yeah, that's the, something I good. wish I dove into a little bit more was learning how to speak the mm -hmm. language, you know. Never too late. Yeah, yeah, I know. Lanai I know. just said that he's been learning. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, he has, he's been taking a couple of classes. Oh, wow, yeah. good for and him. And a lot of online resources. But uh, I think, you know, in the next, you know, two decades, I feel like mm -hmm. a lot more people will, well, we will hear Hawaiian more normally out in public. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a really cool thing. And you know, I know you do a lot with uh, Hawaiian radio. Mm -hmm. That That's your big thing, right? That's right. your passion right. is to to promote Hawaiian radio on top of mm -hmm. the radio. <laughs> right. Or Hawaiian music on the radio. One of the um, main reasons or things that drew me to Summit was uh, Kiaiani, the Hawaiian music, because mm -hmm. that's the music I grew up with. You know, I grew up obviously dancing hula, and that's the music Auntie Aloha always had on the radio when we were going to and from shows. Um, so when I f was first approached to come to Summit, it, that was probably the reason why I came was to be a part of that mm -hmm. um, that culture that culture and mm -hmm. you know just that environment yeah yeah so so you could sing all all these songs you could only all, all I don't that know time. about singing <laughs> I don't think you want me to sing well, you, you, you knew the lyrics <laughs> oh yes least. I knew uh, the lyrics yeah I memory. wish I could sing that is one thing I always <laughs> wish I could do is sing well here's your chance yeah, go for it no. Patty. we want to build your listeners <laughs> everyone can sing not everybody can sing well <laughs> I make a joyful noise <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just make noises yeah, yeah. <laughs> so was it ever was it ever weird for you being around this culture, with it not necessarily being your own culture, did you ever feel out of place, or or because you were kind of, you were just thrown into it at such a young age, you kind of felt like it was part of you, anyways. You, it, I'm, and plus, you yeah. look local as well. No, and that's yeah. Everybody, <laughs> so you got an advantage. <laughs> you know, exactly how you explain it is how I feel because I think because I was so young when I got into hula and everything, um, I never really saw myself not Hawaiian. Hawaiian. Yeah. You know, I knew I wasn't Hawaiian by blood. Mm -hmm. And my dad, although my dad was haole, he never raised us that way. He embraced the culture. Mm -hmm. And my mom being Filipino, you know, she mixed in, and Hawaii has such a strong Filipino community, mm -hmm. but she never really raised us with the Filipino culture or mindset, you know? Um, so we, we adapted really well and I always saw myself as local and yeah. Hawaiian and never felt like it was difficult or that I was out of place. Yeah, I, see, I think that's such an interesting upbringing because there are some people like that mm -hmm. who aren't Hawaiian, but they, you know, even maybe speak Hawaiian or they go through, um, they have a Hawaiian upbringing or maybe later in life they learn Hawaiian. Because mm -hmm. like my dad, he isn't Hawaiian, but he speaks fully Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. He learned Hawaiian after he graduated high school. And my, my mom, she's more hale looking. She's mm -hmm. Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. So you would never guess, you know, right, I right. got my Hawaiian from my mom. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we grew up and I, I'm Hawaiian and we grew up in a Hawaiian language household, Hawaiian cultural household um but there's some people who are hawaiian like hawaiian by blood you know hawaiian kanaka maoli mm -hmm. but they don't really grow up with hawaiian culture mm -hmm. and I, I i just feel like the the whole dynamic is like total totally different and people go through these identity crises too right um but it's just we talk about it all the time on the podcast like what does it mean to be hawaiian you know is it the blood? Is it just, you know, being raised here? And I, I like to separate it by being local and being Hawaiian. Correct. And like Hawaiian being a mindset or, or something mm -hmm. that you can like adapt to. Or, right. You know, something that you can uh, teach your kids or raise your kids in. So, yeah, the 
like the saying Hawaiian by heart, I feel like that's very controversial. Mm -hmm. But I feel like being raised with the culture like like you were like actually like mm -hmm. the dance the songs mm -hmm. all of that i think that's the closest thing you can get to hawaiian at heart and i think too it's the lifestyle you yeah. know i, I yeah. think it's Z exactly um, it's respect mm -hmm. for the culture and traditions and just i've learned so much you know not just through dance and language but just being around, for example, being around Auntie Aloha and her family, mm -hmm. you know, n not just her, but with other local families, the way, I, I don't even want to say it's tradition. It's, mm -hmm. I, I think it's just lifestyle, the way you respect each other. The way, Yes, every culture has that respect, but in Hawaii, it's just something, you know, when we say there's just so much Aloha, it's, it, it is, it, it's just, it's like your heart, right? It's what you feel. And yeah, my dad um, really embraced that. And, mm -hmm. and we did too. And our kids, I think there's, from when I grew up learning Hawaiian culture and dance and tradition is very different because now it's so much more about the language. Mm -hmm. And um, back then, it wasn't such a, Big, you know, it was something we did because it was, I'm going to go to Hula and this is what we learn. Now it's become so much a part of the everyday. People are learning the culture and the language. And um, it, it's just, I don't know, it's like a resurgence yes, of yes, yeah. this Hawaiian awareness. Yeah, starting from awareness. around the right. 60s, 70s. Right. You know, like my oldest one took Hawaiian language in high school but it, even then, it wasn't this full resurgence that there is now, which I'm glad there is. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's interesting you say that because I think in nowadays it's more so with the language mm -hmm. where maybe in the beginning where we were able to practice everything again and the language was reinstated. It was more so with the, the practices. Right. Hula. Right. And I know the Mary Monarch came back right. and all that. Right. Um, but now, you know, 50 years later, it's the language. The mm -hmm. language is the most important part. And more so going back to the Aina, mm -hmm. where there's a lot of these sustainable movements. Right. Uh, right. So yeah, it is interesting to see how that resurgence kind of transformed mm -hmm. over the years. Well, mm -hmm. everything matters mm -hmm. and everything is playing a crucial role. But yeah, I didn't think about that, how, how it's changed from more cultural practices mm -hmm. to more the language right. and um, this like la Aloha Aina mm -hmm. stuff. And then you have, you know, some that are really all around and, you know. Yeah, those are uh, people that, I wish I would. I'm yeah, not even like that. Me you too. Know? I got you the know? language. I don't have, you yeah. know, you're not seeing me farm every day or right, dance floor right. or yeah. all these things. So, yeah, it's very, very interesting. I, I love talking about these these things. Do you, do you ever feel like somebody could be Hawaiian if they're not, if they're, if they don't have the blood? Because even though you're born here. Mm -hmm. you're not necessarily Hawaiian. Right. But I, I feel like, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like reflecting on mm -hmm. this right now as I yeah. speak. Um, how if you were born and raised here, you had a family, you raised your family, you know, your future, you have kids, mm -hmm. you know, they have kids. And then you have this generation of, they're, they're from here, they're local, but they don't have the blood, but they do everything, you know, Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. Their lifestyle is Hawaiian. I feel like I, I'm. I kind of feel like that makes them a little Hawaiian, and I don't know if that's a little controversial because I've been saying you need you need the blood, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I think maybe maybe we can't say they are Hawaiian, but maybe they just. Oh, I'm I'm really confused. Like yeah, I, no, I need to it, have a panel on this. this it, is, it's it is. I'm, I'm seeing all the I comments think, coming to me on Instagram, <laughs> and, and I think you'll have both sides. Yeah, I, I think um, there will be people that will say, "Yeah, you know, they're Hawaiian," mm. and then there are people that say, "No, they're not," because they don't have the blood. Yeah. Um, I still, even you know, for example, taking on this job. You know, there are people that would, um, this new job in, as the GM for the stations and people would say, oh, you know, they have a Hawaiian, 
female. Mm -hmm. And, or some people will say local, you know, born and raised in Hawaii. And I will make the correction because I wasn't born here and I don't want to in, I don't want to represent incorrectly, you know, I, and I wasn't born here. I was raised here. Um, I do feel that I was raised here from such a young age where I did learn a lot mm -hmm. and, and embrace a lot of what I've been taught and practice a lot of what I've been taught. But it is, I think it's controversial. You know, it's Super. like, I, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. Who has I, the right answer? Yeah. Right? I, and does anybody, it, you know? Yeah, is there a right or yeah, wrong answer? You, know, is it, you does can it, go to the elders and ask ooh. them. And even there, I think you'll have different answers. Yeah, because I've, I've heard, you know, some people equate it to nationality or ethnicity you know, or Hawaiians mm -hmm. and nationality. No, Hawaiians and ethnicity. Mm -hmm. They're both maybe. I think Hawaii is a very unique place where it does have a, like, it does cause that confusion because, right. you know, we've mentioned before, like California, you're Californian, mm -hmm. you know, um, Boston, you're Bostonian, mm -hmm. you know, right. in, in Hawaii, it's not necessarily that, but I've heard arguments where people said back in the days where if you were born here, you were Hawaiian. Um, but yes, I, I think one day we might have to do a live podcast with a, a panel of Hawaiian practitioners. Uh, let, let us know if you guys want to see that because that I feel like yeah. that would be really cool. And, you know, <laughs> even asking that, uh, thinking about it now that we're talking about yeah. it, even asking that question, I think it's a lot more sensitive now. Mm -hmm versus many years ago you yes, know like yes. growing up for me growing up and maybe i was too young to know but i think now more so because of everything that we're going through in the state the resurgence i think it's that question is a lot more sensitive nowadays mm. than it may have been some yeah. years past 100 percent, definitely yeah Oh, this is very interesting. <laughs> I was I was planning to talk more about radio, but <laughs> sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. This is great. Yeah, I'm I'm happy that we're we're talking about this because yeah. In in our last couple episodes, we we've been talking about this, and there's been a lot of uh, comments on the Instagram posts that we've been posting, mm. and I've just been reading all of them, and there have been some interesting takes on both sides. So I'm uh, I'm just confuse myself now right right, right. and I, I just i really appreciate the perspectives and just having people just creating the dialogue you yeah. know just th that we're talking about it because mm -hmm. maybe we're so set on on one thing um but once you hear the other side you know a lot of times you just kind of this um disregard it mm -hmm. but you know you gotta listen because maybe they have a, a good point as well so right yeah, I think from from this episode too, people are gonna we're yeah, gonna by far, we're gonna get I'm the wheels going the expert in people's on that, head. Yeah, you know more so because I'm yeah. not Hawaiian blood. I w would never speak on that, but I do agree. Everybody has their their opinion and or their view mm -hmm. that needs to be respected, regardless. Yeah, you know, definitely. And mm -hmm. and there's people who have the same you know upbringing as you, same right. upbringing as me, right. who are listening to this. And now they're probably talking with their friends or, yeah. or their family, their wife or husband and their kids right. about this. Right. And I love that. I, I hope that's what you guys are doing. Listeners just like thinking about this and reflecting on this. And if anything, so it, it just creates more awareness mm -hmm. to the culture yeah. and to the people and the traditions. Yes. And so, I mean, it's a good thing. Yes. hundred percent awareness yeah. and empathy. Right. You know, you realize that you're not the only one thinking about right, this. Right, We're right. all struggling with this yeah. together. Like, <laughs> what are we? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So going back to, to the radio. So yes. you, you started with Hawaiian and then how did you get into radio? So I started with Hawaiian Air. Um, I left in 93 to be a stay at home mom for 12 years because mm -hmm. I, I, I just had my second child and didn't really have, you know, full-time babysitter. And then if I did, my paycheck would have gone to the babysitter. So I stayed home to homeschool my mm -hmm. kids and raise my kids for 12 years. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, so by the time I was ready to go back to work, I 
one of my really good friends, Sweetie Picaro, who I cheered with in high school. Picaro. Is that related to Picaro? Picaro? Um, I, th- I believe she is. That's her nephew. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because he's going to come on the podcast. Oh, really? In weeks, yeah. I, I believe the Picaros are all related. Yeah, But yeah. anyway, cool. uh, she and I were talking one day, and I was talking about you know going back to work, and she knew I had done sales at Hawaiian Air, because after I got pregnant, my first child, I had did sales at Hawaiian Air because I couldn't fly mm-hmm. anymore. Um, she said, we have a sales assistant position open. At, at that time, it was Clear Channel, KSSK. Mm-hmm. Um, she said, why don't you apply? And I said, I don't know anything about radio. Mm-hmm. And she said, no, it's just a sales assistant position. You know, it's a good starting position and get back into the workforce. So I thought, yeah, you know what, I'll do that. So I applied, got the job. Um, was a sales assistant for about six months and started getting really antsy because I'm not a behind the desk, stay in the office kind of person. And I was given the opportunity to um, move into sales for Star 101.9. At that time, everybody had their designated station they sold for. And so I started my radio sales career on star 101.9 sold that station for a long time before i moved over to kssk and then eventually you know everything kind of reorged and we sold all stations mm-hmm. wait can so can i ask you what what do you mean by sell so what, what, so what are you sell, selling advertising um air er, so to pretty businesses? much yes to oh, the different okay. so businesses ad spots, ad spots. Mm. so when you're listening to the radio and you hear all the commercials you know that's our job to go and get the the ad sales because oh, okay. um, that generates the the revenue for the sales oh, okay. uh, for well, the radio stations I need, I need to ask you for some advice so we can get um ad and sponsors for the podcast exactly yeah. that's exactly <laughs> what we do oh okay. that's exactly what okay. our job in sales it's to get businesses um you know events to come and advertise with us is that so that's the that's how radio is mainly funded just through that in most part i mean there's a lot of different wheels to it mm-hmm. but for the most part um the sales that we generate okay. is a big part of the revenue nice Mm-hmm. Okay, so you started from sales, and then you just slowly started to move up the ranks. Yep. So I most of my um, career was at Clear Channel, which eventually became iHeart. Um, I left iHeart in two thousand sixteen, I think it was fifteen or sixteen, and went to work at Hawaii News Now in mm-hmm. TV. It was great. It was a great opportunity. Um, worked for Rick Bangiardi there. Mm-hmm. And um, decided that I didn't like TV as much as I did radio. <laughs> and were you doing sales for sales TV? as well? So mm-hmm. that's commercials now. Yes, now it's okay, commercials. Like, okay. mm-hmm. Very different because one's audio, theater mm-hmm. of the mind. Yeah. Uh, the other is visual. Um, so I was there for about a year and a half, and then um, took a break from media and ended up here at Summit mm-hmm. in sales. Um, you know, just got hired to do sales, eventually went to sales manager, and then in January took over this new mm-hmm. position. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. It's been exciting since yeah. January. It's been very eventful. I, I always love seeing a uh, female in power. It, it's it's great. Um, never in all my years that I've been in radio thought that I would be at this position. Never really strived to be in this position um so it took some getting used to but i'm glad I, i'm glad because it gives me an opportunity to bring our team together and make sure that everything stays local mm-hmm. um and i think with the experience of being in sales helps the team because I know how it feels, mm. you know? You've been in there. Right, position. right. Versus mm-hmm. somebody that just comes in and has always been in the management position mm-hmm. and not really gone through the trenches. Yeah. Were you ever nervous or you ever had like feelings of inadequacy? Oh, um, always. When you were hired? Definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, it was one of the things that kind of kept me on the fence mm-hmm. and accepting 
um, you tend to think, okay, what is everybody else going to think? Mm. You know, because I was only sales. I wasn't mad. And, and you hear the different stories. But I think in the end, you have to know yourself and what you're capable of. And everybody has a learning curve. There's always so much more to grow. And if you think taking the position is like, I've arrived, you know, I'm that, then you're in the wrong position. And I knew coming into it that I had a lot to learn, but I was willing to learn. But I also felt that I had a lot to bring to the table, mm -hmm. um, a different perspective from, you know, years past. Mm -hmm. So I had to be true to me and true to what I believed in and accepted it and have operated that way since yeah i love that i yeah. love that you say your value you know you got to know your value mm -hmm. what you can bring to the table i know i know some people experience imposter syndrome where mm -hmm. they think oh you know am i really supposed to be here right you know, right uh, i don't know if i'm good enough for this but yeah. once you're confident in, in yourself you kind of block out everything else everything else is just white noise and you know you just you tell yourself you know I'm here for a reason. Yeah, I, I think we all go for, through that self self doubt, yeah. right? The yeah. the self you talk to yourself and the pros and cons, um, and a lot of people give in to that. And I I think we all have to be strong enough to just know our value and what we bring and what we can do mm -hmm. and what we'd like to do. You know, it may not always be right, but it's also taking that step of faith and taking the risk because you're never going to know until you try. Mm -hmm. How do you get to that point? What do you tell yourself? Well, what practices do you use to uh, gain that self-confidence? So for me, and I mean, I, I think most people that know me, for me, I'm very grounded in my faith and, um, you know, just to know you're not always perfect. You make mistakes. We all do. I've made a number of them. But to know and acknowledge that you go back to whatever your source is. For me, it's my faith. I go back and I, I read. I talk. Um, my favorite thing to do, haven't done it as much since January because I've been busy, but my favorite thing to do is I do my morning walks. You know, I would be at Kailua Beach at 5.45 in the morning and watch the sunrise and just start my day clearing my head and talking, you know, talking things out and saying my, my prayers and, mm. you know, just kind of pleading and you start your day that way and you kind of just listen and you know yourself, you, it's, it's that whole, you got to know what's in your now, you yeah. know, it, yeah. it, it's, if your gut is right, you know, you got to go with your gut. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like, I've done that for the most part. It's, it's been really good. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's not as keen as you think it is, but for the most part, you go with your gut and you do what you feel is right, mm -hmm. regardless of what people think. And that's my motto. It's like, I may not always be the popular vote or do the thing that is the most popular thing to do, but if you know that your gut tells you that's the right thing to do, then do it and yeah. you win. And you can live with it. Yeah. You, you'll be okay with that, yep. that decision. Right. Yeah. I think, you know, you can follow your heart, you can follow your head. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, it'll still steer you wrong. But right. when you follow your no, oh, yeah. you'll never go wrong. Well, you, I feel like even if you go wrong, it'll still feel right. Yeah. Because you feel like you made the right decision. And you did it because you that's it, it's you it's not because mm -hmm. somebody else told you to do it that way mm -hmm. or you know it's something you did because you believed in it mm -hmm. and not did it just because yeah mm -hmm. that's the beautiful beautiful answer well for sharing that aloha hawaii verse podcast listeners this episode is brought to you by farmers market hawaii a brand with integrity based cultural designs inspired by the life of hawaii and its history they're one of the biggest streetwear brands in Hawaii. You love them. I love them. Their hats are awesome. Their clothes are awesome. It's always so meaningful wearing something from Farmer's Market Hawaii. Shout out to Keone, the owner of it. He's amazing, doing awesome things for the community. Make sure you support them. Mahalo to them for sponsoring this episode. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the podcast. I want to get into Instagram questions real quick. Okay. Because I, I want to, there's a lot more I want to ask you about. And 
um, mm-hmm. talk more about some some other things. But okay, so, this, so I'm gonna get into the first one from Khalil Robinson. He wants to know: Are there ways to measure if the audience for Olelo Hawaii content has grown? And does she see that as a growing audience? Will there be an Olelo Hawaii 24/7 radio station sometime soon? I want to say that there will be. I know we've had a lot of inquiries um, from different people. It's hard to start like a 24-7 radio program or radio station right off the bat. I do know that a little programs have been talked about just how much we implemented or how it's going to get started, you know, is in the works. I do see it growing, especially because as we talked about earlier, the resurgence of the Hawaiian language Mm -hmm. and the interest, I do think now more so than prior, it would be something that would be well embraced. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I don't know if that answers the question, but it is something in the planning, just how much or, how much time is devoted to it in the station itself mm-hmm. is where it's going to take time growing. Yeah. And hopefully, and I would love to see a 24 seven station, mm-hmm. a little station. And I know people have tried, mm-hmm. um, people have tried to start it, you know, starting a station takes a lot of investment. Mm-hmm. There, there's a lot of behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, so when that time comes, it would definitely be something we would love to delve into. Mm-hmm. I know that back in the days there was Kaleo Hawaii mm-hmm. with Larry Kimura. Mm-hmm. Is that? When, yeah, you know, um, it, even I think UH mm-hmm. has tried to do different things. Um, now it's just a matter of who has the space to do it mm-hmm. as far as, you know, whether it's within the program or a station that they can devote mm-hmm. completely to that. How do you how do you measure the numbers? Because I know corporate is always about numbers. You know, mm-hmm. there's there's not always that connection where it's just like oh, but the local people want it. You right. Know, there's there's interest and in, right. You know, they, they won't care if there's interest. They just care about the the dollars. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, is it, that it, ever it, like a it, struggle? You're you're right. It it is true. Um, even just with any ethnic station you know whether it's here in hawaii or hawaiian music stations Mm -hmm. it's hard to convince people in the mainland that the hawaiian music really does mean a lot to the local community fortunately for us our owners you know come january they did say padding focus on your hawaiian stations make sure we're keeping everything up to par. You know, it's, they have no intent in letting it go. So as far as measuring the listeners, um, it's hard to say at any given time exactly who's listening, you know. But you will see by interaction. You will see, you know, now fortunately for social media, you can see interaction who's following on mm-hmm. the station pages. Before you couldn't see that. Um, for mainland companies or owners, a lot of it is measured by revenue. Mm -hmm. You know, if the advertisers are wanting to be on those stations, they see the value in those stations. Mm -hmm. Numbers sell. Right, right. (laughs) Yeah, same with social media. (laughs) Numbers sell and um, the quality of what you're putting out. Okay, cool. And so there's a couple follow-up questions from that one. Is... um, and we we're just talking about mm-hmm. outside of the state of Hawaii. So mm-hmm. with many native Hawaiians leaving the state of Hawaii, is the interest in Hawaiian music growing in Nevada, California, Washington State? Where are the listeners of Hawaiian music growing outside of the state of Hawaii? It's definitely growing. Um, if you even, for example, KINE okay. streaming, uh, we can see a lot of the streaming for KINE is for Japan, for example, a lot of people in Japan yeah, will listen. Japanese love us. <laughs> yes. You know, um, Vegas, there's a huge, obviously it's called the Ninth yeah. Island. <laughs> you know, um, there's a lot of internet stations, Hawaiian stations that have started 
from Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, there's Washington, you know, uh, a lot of transplants there. So we can see from streaming who's listening to the stations because we can tell where, you know, they're logging on. Um, so definitely different states, but I would say more so Japan, Vegas, Washington, we see a lot of it, but it's pretty spread out. It's interesting because you figure if you come to Hawaii and you're listening to Hawaiian music and you want to listen to it when you go home, you're going to go to streaming. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to stream that you're gonna station. Find a way right. To, you're going to stream you know. the station. Yeah. Um, so the interest is growing, but I also see the locals that are moving away. It's their way of still staying connected. Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I know, like when I lived away, I would always listen to right. Hawaiian music, right. or local music, you know? Right. Nec- not necessarily, you know, Hawaiian, there's a Kimie, the Green. You yeah, know, and you're going to listen to your, you know, the, whatever you download. And, mm-hmm. But I think the station, they'll still stream the stations just to feel part of, mm. like they're still here. Yeah. Do you, do you think the audience for Hawaiian music has, has changed over the last couple of years? And if so, how? Changed in what it's way like that, that, it, dif- that it's... Different audience. Like maybe it was more our kupuna now is maybe more young people. You know, as far as listening away or listening here, you mean? Both, or just audience? Yeah. Audience. Uh, yeah. No, I actually, I, I don't feel like it's changed. I think the formats that people listen to have changed. Um, you know, reggae used to always be known as the younger station, mm-hmm. but you see a lot older people listening to reggae now. Um, traditional Hawaiian music used to always be keyed as, you know, it was just the older people that yeah. listened to that. But I think because the culture has grown so much and so many more people are getting engrossed in the culture and learning the culture, now you have younger kids listening to the traditional Hawaiian music. You have a lot of hula dancers that were younger who are now in high school or older that are listening to, tra- mm-hmm. you know, so I think... Um, there are a lot more different age groups Mm -hmm. listening to the different formats versus reggae was always younger. Traditional was Mm -hmm. always older. People are diversifying their ears. Yes, yes, (laughs) definitely. Definitely. Uh, That's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that's good just to have an open mind in everything, even Mm -hmm. music, you know, Mm -hmm. like people who uh, just hate on country. Right. I I think that's like the the most common thing I hear for music when Mm -hmm. I'm talking to people about music is, Oh, I, I hate country and I don't listen to screamo music. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Screamo, I feel like that's a universal thing. Mm-hmm. But y- universally, I feel like it's, oh yeah, I don't like country. Then I tell them, you probably just don't listen to the right country songs. It's but I think a song. lot more younger people are listening to country There's too people, than ever yes. before. My yes. kids, who I never thought would listen to mm-hmm. country, listen to country. Yeah, even people I wouldn't even expect to listen to country, listen to country. Yeah. But there are some people who are just like, I don't listen to country. I, I don't like it. But I, I feel like you just got to listen to them. I used to be one the, of those. Yeah. yeah. I was one. I was like, country. And then <laughs> now my kids play. I'm like, oh, this is not bad. You just got to listen to the right yes. ones. Because a lot yes. of, you know, I think the people are thinking like very traditional. Like, yeah. Like hillbilly, right, like right, right, kind right, of right, country, right. You know, I never thought I would listen to yeah. country. And then, but there's just a lot of like more poppy ones. Yeah, there's you know some that just you know their voice sounds good. Right. You know. So, right. Yeah. That's just a shout out to all the country uh, music <laughs> lovers out there. <laughs> okay. Do you think traditional Hawaiian music is evolving? Do I think it's evolving? Yes. I think it's evolving in the way that we have a lot younger artists Mm. that are embracing the traditional. You know, um, the younger artists, I believe, are bringing a lot more, is it ingenuity, to the music that they're putting out. Yeah, yeah. They're, Um, they're, it's evolving with them. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's still traditional, yeah. but they're it, it's more they're personalizing it a lot more with their talents. Yeah, and so that I feel that that's just one way that traditional Hawaiian music is um, evolving. Yeah, it's cool to see that. I think 
I hope I got the name of the band correct. Keolu music. Yes. Is that them? Yeah. The, I, and you know, um, male, female, individual, group, it, all of them, it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't have to be this whole big band that, you know, or whole big group that is growing the traditional Hawaiian music mm -hmm. or evolving the Hawaiian music. Mm -hmm. um, I think everybody is bringing their own perspective to it and their own talents. And it's interesting because at first, you know, you can hear a song and it's like, wow, that's different. But then it, when you really take a step back and listen to it, wow, times have changed, mm -hmm. you know? Um, or even if they just take an old song and they redo it, it mm -hmm. the way that it's redone is just amazing. Yeah, or maybe they add a little island yes, or reggae yes, twist to it yes, or something like that. Yes, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, Ekolu, yes. the drinking problem. Yes. They did make yes. the reggae version of that. Oh, and then you talk yeah. about country, right? And we yeah, take right country there. songs. That, yeah, exactly. exactly. Right, wow. right. That's, that's really cool. All right, so we'll get into the next one. Um, that was my stepdad. He, he had oh. some really good questions, so I just wanted to, to ask them. Okay, so our Hawaii Verse team wants to know, what is your best piece of advice for raising kids? Ooh, every day is different. Um, I would say to always see, if you have multiple kids, to always acknowledge and see them as different from each other and not compare. Mm. Um, I so. know, you know, comparing the kids and expecting what one did, expecting the next one to be the same way. If you go into each day knowing that they're not, you don't go in with the expectation that, oh, it's all going to be the same cookie cutter mm. way to raise them. Yeah. So like some one kid maybe fears the rice paddle a little bit more. One kid fears the slipper a little bit more. And one fear just fears none yeah, of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or one just you need a belt to really get to them. Yeah. Right, right, <laughs> right. One, you can raise your voice and one you can't, you know. Yeah. All of them are different. And mm. um so with with my kids, I have three girls and one boy, and my son has uh, nicknamed himself favorite. <laughs> and so the girls will always say, "Mom, who's your favorite?" We know he's your favorite. <laughs> yep, he's my favorite son. You know, <laughs> nice. and I can say that because I only have one son. That's what I tell my little brother. Yeah, he's my only little brother. But yeah, you're my favorite little brother. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but there are no favorites. Yeah, you know, parents say that. I feel deep down, there's got to be a little bit. They they say your first one is your favorite or your last one. Yeah, you know, and I'll, I'll argue and I'll say it depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will definitely cool. say it depends on the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I had another question, um, but you already answered it. Um, about um, did you ever want to learn learn the Hawaiian language? Yes, but you already answered that. Yeah, and you know, like I can understand, and I can pick up, and obviously, you know, growing up, one thing that Auntie Aloha did really well is when we did prepare for competition for Mary Monarch. It was always we were given the song, the chant, the lyrics, and the English version. You know. But she also, if possible, introduced us to the writer, the composer, so that they could tell us their story mm -hmm. behind it. And I appreciated that, you know, and I, that was the extent of my Hawaiian language. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I learned more and learned how to speak. And my son has a really good friend who is a Kumu, a Hawaiian language Kumu, and I watch him with his daughter who's only one and everything is Hawaiian, you know, and I love it. I love it. And I love being around it and being that we'll watch her. Sometimes you tend to repeat it because that's what she knows. So you have to, you know, so uh, it, it's neat. I still would love to learn more. Yeah. It, it is cool when you, uh, well, I, I grew up speaking Hawaiian as my yeah. first language, but to see that, in little kids and like mm -hmm. my niece my brother has a two-year-old niece and she's at the point where she's repeating stuff and mm -hmm. she knows a lot of words she's so smart she counts it yeah. um, and then I, I remember a couple months ago we were at uh, my friend's house and we um, they came over and 
she was telling she, people were carrying her and she was saying ilalo 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 yeah. ilalo which means down right but they didn't understand what, what she was saying, she saying? so i'm like hey guys uh she's saying uh <laughs> put it down <laughs> but it's cool yeah, when they're saying no, I love they're it. choosing I, hawaiian right, over english right and yeah. it's neat because you know like i said she just turned one and they'll say things and she knows exactly because that's what Mm -hmm. that's how they speak to her yeah, you know yeah. and English is everywhere right. they're gonna learn English right. so if you're thinking of you know, teaching your kids Hawaiian and you know worried about them not learning English I speak English perfectly well fine fine finally perfect yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I speak English good I think but <laughs> you speak <no>. it well <laughs> I'm just joking but yeah it's a whole English is everywhere you're gonna learn English yeah. on TV radio people are are going to be speaking it. If we don't speak Hawaiian, it's not going to be around. So, right, right. You know, let's, let's not worry too much about the English. Let's focus on the Hawaiian. <laughs> True. Okay, so uh, model for the Instagram questions. Make sure you leave some on the next podcast. Maybe your questions will make it on the podcast. <laughs> okay, so I, I do want to talk about something that was a, um, had a huge impact on your life just recently mm -hmm. in 2019. Right. Yes. Yeah, and that you. So you're a cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. Thank God yes. you're still around. Yes. My stepdad, he was also a cancer. He is also a cancer survivor. So I know it's, it's not easy. It's it's very hard for families and especially mm -hmm. the one going through it. Mm -hmm. um, so what was that like? And maybe just you know, I just want to hear your story. Yeah. No, it was rough. Um, it. I remember. It was the week between Christmas and New Year's, and I had a really bad bout of heartburn, mm. which I can't even remember other than that time struggling with heartburn. Mm. So I took Tom's, you know, everybody tells you take Tom's. Uh, but it was pretty debilitating that day. It, it was painful, and I just remember telling my husband, nothing's working. He said, go to the doctor. I'm like, I'm not going to go to the doctor and have heartburn yeah. you know to me it was ridiculous but I ended up calling because it was so uncomfortable so being that I was not young anymore and protocol for a certain age is every time you come in with pain they have to check your heart make sure it's not your heart um, so they did the EKG x-ray and blood test so we waited and the doctor came back and called us into a different room and we both thought oh that's weird why are they calling us into a different room and she basically said, oh, your heart's great, you know, um, your blood test, EKG, everything. She said, but have you been sick? And I said, no. She said, no coughing, nothing. I said, no. She said, well, we see a spot on your lung, um, you know, so we thought maybe you had walking pneumonia or something. I said, no, I haven't been sick at all. So she said, okay, we're going to give you some antibiotics. Um, come back in two weeks. Went back in two weeks and nothing had changed. So from there... They started doing testing. Um, I think I was, not I think, I was still in denial. Mm -hmm. um, come January 10th, I was sitting at my desk here and um, the doctor called and told me over the phone that my test results came back and I had lung cancer. Never smoked a cigarette in my life. That's the craziest um, thing. So, you know, I held it together while I talked to the doctor. He asked me if I had any questions, and I said no, hung up the phone, went to my car, and called my husband and bawled. Um, we were in shock. Um, yeah, we. Uh, I just remember that day clearly. We didn't know what to say. So from there, I had to go through tests, you know, just to make sure it was in my lung. Did it originate in my lung? Blah, blah, blah. Um, February 6th, they went in and they removed my upper right lobe of my lung. Mm -hmm. um, and fortunately, was able to get everything. You know, it didn't spread to my lymph nodes or anything. So, so it was pretty early. It, it was early. Um, supposedly, I was... I had that spot from 2016 Oh wow! because when they looked back, um, I went in for a shoulder x-ray because the doctor was just trying to see if there was any uh -huh. trace of anything. And in 2016, they see it, you know, but nobody ever really looked at it then because they weren't looking mm -hmm. at anything other than my shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, um, we got it out through surgery. Um, 
and it's been great since you know it's february made three years they say you can't claim remission until five years but i'm feeling great and haven't had any trouble with it since nice yeah what was your initial reaction just like what was going to your head like because you don't know the severity of it, you know. Right. That's like the um, last thing anyone ever wants to hear. Oh, it's uh. it's devastating. Mm-hmm. Um, and I am one where I tend to kind of keep my thoughts to myself. You know, you want to be strong, especially being a mom. Yeah. You you want to be strong. Yeah, you don't want to f- show any. Yeah, you want to be strong or, for yeah. your family. Yeah. You know, so for a long time, I would like just be all cool and just try and keep you know i was quiet but in my head i'm thinking what do i do what Mm -hmm. next because you don't know you don't know what next um you start thinking about you know like i had grandkids or i have grandkids it's like and they are now my world too and i want to be there for them how is this going to affect them um, and then you even go through the process of like, what do I do? How do I start leaving things for my kids? Writing letters, you know. Wow. Uh, you know, I, your mind goes from I got this to just the darkest. Yes, place, right? yes. And even you know, because you figure January, I found out it was a month later that I had the surgery. So that's a month of laying in bed thinking about things, you know, because it's always when you're by yourself um, that you're with your thoughts and your thoughts go Mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. So how the whole time you just had great support from your family? I had amazing support from my family. Um, We did not say anything publicly and I had asked that of my kids and my husband i did not even tell my own brothers until maybe a week or so before surgery and i remember the only reason why i told them um world cancer day i believe was a few days or a week before my surgery and my son had asked if he could take a picture of me because he wanted to post it on World Cancer Day. And I hesitated um, because it meant that we had to tell people. Mm, it's like coming out, yeah. Yeah, like I yeah. came to work every day. And Nobody suspected a thing. Didn't say a word to anyone. Oh. Um, so I told my husband, you know, I, I wasn't really excited about it and we talked about it and we decided that i my kids needed a way to share Mm -hmm. you know they they needed to have their out Mm -hmm. and we felt this was a way so on world cancer day my four kids had their individual posts with a black and white picture and Mm -hmm. shared our story and I want to say it was maybe not even a week before my surgery. I think it was like a few days. Um, May have been like a day or two. And that's how people knew. So when I found out that they were going to do that, I had to tell my family. Mm. And um, it was, it was tough. Can't even imagine. Yeah. Yeah, So many calls, texts, everything. And then then you get bombarded. Right. 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 Yeah. Wow. And even then, um, you know, there, I think there were even people here at Mm -hmm. work um, that didn't know until I think this year when I posted Mm -hmm. my third year anniversary and they're like, what, you know, we had no idea. And it's, it was just something that I didn't, you know, you're supposed to be out eight weeks. And I think I came back to work in five weeks, six weeks and just kind of very strong and resilient. Yeah. Stubborn. It's stubborn. the Irish stubborn. Yeah. Irish <laughs> That's <stubbornness>. the Irish. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Wow. But it, it's quite a journey. I mean, you definitely, um, it's something your whole family goes through mm-hmm. with you. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. People think that, you know, it just happens to the individual, but it affects 
the whole entire family, mm-hmm. you know, especially if you have kids or you right. know, grandkids, right. mm-hmm. spouse, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, I'm ha- I'm happy you're still here and you're, you're able to to lead yes. the team. I know yes. the people that work here, they only have great things to say about you. So Thank you're, you. you're doing something right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was it was a journey and um, you know, I it really really made me learn a lot more about it. I didn't know lung cancer that mm-hmm. specific one adenocarcinoma was very popular in women and mm-hmm. since then I've um, connected with the American Lung Association and um, you know committed to be on their leaderboard for three years to help research and get more awareness out yeah I didn't I didn't know that you could get lung cancer without ever smoking a I cigarette or anything like that. I think that's a common misconception. When I was a senior in high school, I did a my senior project was misconceptions of breast cancer because mm. my auntie had cancer at that time, so uh-huh. that, that's why I was passionate about it. But there's a lot of misconceptions about cancer, and um, it seems it's, it's like one of those things that we all know of, mm-hmm. but we don't know too much about. Right? We know like okay, it's bad. Right? You go chemotherapy, mm-hmm. you probably lose your hair. Mm-hmm. You know, all these, these very basic, you know, sh- shallow n- knowledge of mm-hmm. of cancer. Um, so how, like, can you, can you just tell us a little bit about lung cancer? Like, how do you know how you got it? Do you know any ways to prevent it? Um, I don't statistics? know how I got it. Um, it was one of the things that I asked. And my father died from lung cancer in 95. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, took care of my dad for two years. Uh, He was first given a six-month diagnosis. He went, or, you know, two two years. Some people say it's hereditary. The doctors say it's not. Or my doctor said it's not. We had two different kinds of cancer. They say that... um, you can't really screen for it, but yet I'm finding out you can do lung screening to see if you are a candidate or if you are prone to it. Um, I don't think you can prevent it. I don't think you can prevent any kind of cancer. Some people might argue with that. I think you can live a certain lifestyle to, for example, for me, when I found out um, I had a friend who really walked me through a whole lifestyle change Mm -hmm. and they say sugar feeds cancer, you know, so cold Turkey, Mm. I cut out sugar and went on this keto diet and, you know, did, didn't do carbs and everything just cause I wasn't going to have it grow in that next month until I could get it cut out. Um, so I think there's ways that you can mitigate it. Right. But I don't think you can, actually Mm -hmm. you know um find out where it came from or you know yeah yeah, the sun you know like skin cancers sun but lung cancer i never smoked and adenocarcinoma is known to be a cancer that is high risk for women non-smoking women Mm -hmm. so you know I don't know. I, I don't know wow. pollution, the things we eat. I, yeah. I, okay. Cancer is one of those unknowns. Mm-hmm. It's just something you don't want. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my biggest fears is because mm-hmm. I don't drink, I don't mm-hmm. smoke, mm-hmm. never did in my life. Yeah. And I, you know, that's one of my fears is like I end up having lung cancer or something like mm-hmm. knock on wood mm-hmm. just because, you know, it's just, it happens sometimes to the most unexpected people. Right. And I remember being in the hospital, um, and you feel bad. And sometimes I still do. The the thing that I struggle is I'm elated because I'm still here, yeah. because I survived. I didn't have to do the chemo. I didn't have to go through the horrible aftermath of dealing with it. And there's people that still do. You know, there there's the ones that don't recover, um, or the ones that struggle even after surgery. And I remember feeling bad, like mm. you don't want to celebrate because there are people who can't yeah, celebrate. Yeah, guilt eats at you. Right, you know, um, but yet you have to celebrate because 
it is a victory, you yeah. know? Um, so part of that too is a struggle. Yeah, definitely. I, th I think that that happens with uh, different things in life too, mm -hmm. where, you know, it's, you're having a good day as the smallest thing. Right. Like, as, right. like I'm having a good day, you know, you're having a bad day and I didn't want to share how good my right. day was, but right. I don't want to, you know, m make it feel, make you feel worse because I had such a good day. Mm -hmm. Um, and I see, I see that happen quite often with friends. Yeah, because you kind of feel like it's not others. fair, right? It's like yeah, and I, no, I, I think on one end, you know, if you're having a bad day, you shouldn't take it out on anyone else mm -hmm. just because you're having a bad day. Doesn't mean that everybody mm -hmm. else has to has to have a bad day, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, for on the opposite end, with like having a good day, you know, having mm -hmm. these these good news and mm -hmm. these celebrations, I, I don't think. You could ever go wrong with that unless it's like very you're like throwing right. it at people and right. almost like braggadocious yes yeah. yes exactly and you know one thing that I, I i think if it's for the ones that are going through it or that do um i was taught or corrected from the very beginning because i used to always say oh my cancer my cancer you know when i have my or i have cancer i had my cancer somebody corrected me right off the bat and say, don't take ownership. You know, it's not your cancer. You didn't ask for it. You didn't buy it. You know, mm -hmm. it's cancer. Mm -hmm. And I had to correct the way that I looked at it and approached it, you know, cause it's not, it's not your cancer. It's your journey and mm -hmm. it, it's what you're going through right now, but you don't take ownership of it, mm -hmm. you know? And it was, it was a shift. It is a shift in how you think because you're right. I don't want this. I don't want ownership of this. Um, and it kind of helps you get through it, mm -hmm. you know, because it kind of changes the mindset on how you look at it. Yeah, nice. You're you're just the host and you're like, get, get out of here. Yeah, You don't exactly. belong here. Yeah, you're not mine. <laughs> yeah. You're not invited. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You never even take off your slippers right, and you come right, to the house. Right. <laughs> Get out of so, here. So <laughs> go away. Yeah. <laughs> how how much do you think it's changed your life or how has it changed your life? Ooh. Good in good or bad. Uh you know, it's I think it's done nothing but good. And it's made me more aware of what I put into my body. It's made me more aware of um, how I eat, what I eat. Not that I'm always, believe me, I love my junk food. Mm -hmm. I love my chocolate. I, you know, I, I love, I'm, I'm a foodie. I love to eat. I love to cook. But I think on top of that, it's done the same for my family. Mm -hmm. My family is well aware now of physical well-being. You know, take care of yourself. Um, and the biggest lesson for me is cherish the ones you have, you know, and um, enjoy the time, live life, enjoy the time you have with the people that mean the most to you. And I think that's something that we all have learned that it, it's mm -hmm. really, um, you always know that. But until you're in that position, you really don't embrace it as much mm. as you do. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't hit you as much as like yeah. when your back's up against the wall. Right, right. Something's happening to you. And you know, because three years ago, I didn't know if I'd be going to soccer games with my grandson mm. now, you know, or watching my daughter get married, you know, like those kinds of things. I didn't know if I was going to be around for that. And we still don't. It doesn't have to be cancer. But when you're going through it, those are the things that you learn to appreciate more and take value in. Yeah. Be grateful every day. You yes. Know, you never know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Especially when we live over here in the most beautiful place yes. in the whole wide world. Yes. With the best and surf in the world, the best people, best food. I love it. <laughs> and just family. I mean, Hawaii, it, everybody is fine, but Hawaii, like, you know, I was just telling you folks how we're spent our weekend is just family yeah you know oh yeah um happy belated birthday <laughs> oh yeah thank you yeah but you know everything is family and um family doesn't have to be blood just like hawaiian doesn't have to be blood mm, yes oh i like that yes yeah something uh, i, I want to have so many more conversations about the hawaiian yeah, i know hawaiian 
be it's definitely an interesting yeah. subject yeah definitely okay all right so we're getting towards the end of the podcast i just got a couple more questions what what do you think the future of radio is future of radio that is like the uh question that gets asked all the time yeah. um i think the future of radio has changed uh future of radio is debatable some people will say it's going away i don't think it's going away i think the way people listen to radio or consume radio is different um now obviously there's different platforms digital social media is a huge um factor in that i think it will continue to evolve and change um, into something that we don't know traditionally as just radio. Like um, podcasts. Right, mm -hmm. right. Podcasts is a perfect example mm -hmm. of that. Um, so, you know, people will say radio is going away, radio is dying. I think radio in the way that people thought radio was is dying. And, um, but I still think it's a very viable um, and source of music and news and information entertainment. um yeah entertainment you we know uh, it, it, something. exactly you know and i don't think it's going to go away mm. i just think it's going to evolve mm -hmm. as everything in life right. does it has to yeah. you know you have to evolve to survive if it doesn't evolve it won't mm. survive yeah awesome what about the future for yourself? What, what, what do you have planned for the next 5, 10, 15 mm, years? Let's see. Future, I keep my goals and my standards mm -hmm. for myself. You know, I'm pretty hard on myself with that. Um, but my future, my goals, I look forward to, it's always family first. And I look forward to, um, you know, soon within the next year, my next daughter getting married, more mm -hmm. grandchildren watching my grandchildren grow up. But um, to me, if I can just make a difference when it comes to work, the people here, changing the mindset, um, you know, and just keeping people pressing on towards their goals and looking ahead instead of just the here and now. Mm. Um, my future, I don't like to put any limits on what I can do. So from here, it's going to be whatever that next challenge is to approach it the same way that I did with mm -hmm. my current challenges. Mm. Approach it the same way, but differently, like how you approach your kids. Yes. Every challenge different. Yes, exactly. <laughs> approach it with the same work ethic. Yes. And, you know, uh -huh. the way the you same do attitude. Things. Same attitude. Same attitude. Everyone is different. Right. Every challenge is different. Just yep. like every kid is different. Exactly. Yeah. Great, great advice. Okay, what is one thing you wish people knew about you that they don't? Ooh, um, I, let's see. <laughs> Other than I love my crime shows, I'm oh, a nice. writer. I, oh. I love writing. Um, I wish I had more time to do it. Uh, write my, a book one day. Oh gosh, I don't know if I could do that. Everybody but, can write like, a I'm book. Like I'm a journal, journal. I love to journal. Um, in fact, I've started doing it, you know, electronically mm -hmm. just because it's easier to type than to write. But I love writing. Mm -hmm. Like, I love writing cards. I love, from when I was in eighth grade to high school, I, I wrote poems. Mm -hmm. You know, um, to me, writing is just, it, it's an out. Yeah. You know, when you can't sing, you dance hula or you write. That's why I write. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a writer exactly. too. I write poems. I, you know, yeah. I, I wrote a book, you know, I have a bunch of. Yeah, that's how I'm creative in like writing. And Same. Something I'm not a singer. Not yeah, an and it, it's easier to pour out, you know, mm -hmm. what's on the inside. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's hard to say the words. Right. But yeah, when you put it on paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They said one of my favorite. I don't know if it's a quote or just a, something somebody said is never break a, a writer's heart because they'll turn you into ink. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. It's <laughs> a good one. Okay. Uh, did you bring a life hack with you? Oh, gosh. Life hack. You know, life hack can be 
anything, right? It doesn't have to yes, be like a... Something a, to make your life more efficient or so, you know, just be a piece of advice. Yeah, so for me, my life hack, because um, I thought about it, and there's like all these life hacks yeah. that you can do, right? All these little gadgets and gadgets yeah. and shortcuts. I think the life hack that I hold dearest and would love to share is just to start each day with yourself and with your creator, whatever your source, your spiritual, you know, for me, it's, it's, um, giving that first part of my day to who created me and to just really getting in your head and knowing where you're at, at that moment and what you want to do with your day. Mm -hmm. Um, those first few moments, so that first hour of your day is crucial and you just make an appointment with yourself every day to to journal to pray to talk to god um that's my hack because i think it's what got me through and what gets me through life mm, that's awesome it's make an appointment with yourself make an appointment with god the, to me it's make an appointment with god you know mm -hmm. do you ever <clears throat> miss that so when you wake yes. you're like oh you wake up late you you know, yes. I have my morning routines and like <clears throat> mm -hmm. I like to do this before I get on with my day or mm -hmm. it doesn't feel complete sometimes. Right. But sometimes, you know, you just right. life happens and you get busy. And yeah, yeah. mine um, since January has been, you know, I say morning. I prefer morning. It doesn't always happen that mm -hmm. way now, especially. Yeah. Um, but as long as somewhere in the day you fit that appointment in. And sometimes for me, it's when I'm in my car by myself, you know, mm. I have to do that instead of taking that walk yeah. um, or somewhere in the day, just kind of just stopping and going, hey, wait, you know, I missed an appointment. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I like how you say appointment because it's, it's like crucial. Yeah, it's not yes. just like, eh, maybe I'll do this, maybe yep. I don't. It's like if you say you, you really want to exercise, you know, instead of just, you know, trying to wake up at, you know, Right. Between seven or eight or maybe nine sometimes, but like setting appointment, like every day I'm going to wake up at eight o'clock. Right. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to take we my We all have our calendars with our appointments, yeah. right? You know, this is who I have to meet. This yeah. is, make it a meeting. Yeah. Every day in your calendar. It changes your mindset. And when you see it, mm -hmm. you know, it becomes habit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Habits are hard to start, easy to break. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, this is something new. Uh, I, I might start in a future podcast, but I was thinking because radio, mm -hmm. they got like the top five at five. Right, right. So I, I figured it's like top five. This is just a uh, rapid fire answer. Um, There's five questions that I had uh, about favorites. Okay, uh -huh. so favorite place to eat. Favorite place to eat. Oof, it depends on the day. But uh, favorite place to eat, I would say if it was here... Um, I'm an Italian freak, so mm -hmm. Bocce Bistro is one of them Where's in that? Kailua. Okay, I don't think it's I've been there. It's a little nook, but that's Italian. Okay. Um, what do you get there? The lobster ravioli. Oh, that sounds really ono. It's very ono. Lobster yeah. ba bocce? Bocce, B-A-C-I, -I Bistro. B sounds like, like bocce. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. okay, favorite date night spot? Favorite date night spot. Or, or daytime day, whatever, just um, date spot. For me, it's the beach, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not necessarily date, but even in the evening, I love it. I, I love the beach, whether it's, you know, watching the sunrise or watching the moon on the water. I'm a very much a water beach person. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you get in the water once a week? I used to. Mm -hmm. And if I had my way and the time, I still would. <laughs> <laughs> you ever got into surfing? Never morning, did get into surfing. I diving. always kind of wanted to but never really got into it stand up paddleboard we did for a while um but i grew up on the water um sailing and racing um at the kaniohi yacht club my that's where my dad worked so we were on the water oh, every yeah. weekend sailing and skiing and oh nice and jet skiing water sports yeah, yeah so i'm very much a water person yeah water baby <laughs> yes okay favorite song to hula Favorite song to hula, I am going to say is Kavailele o Nu'uanu, um, only because it was my dad's favorite song, mm -hmm. and I know the composer, and I know the story behind it, 
Um, so that's that's why it's my favorite. There's a lot of beautiful hula, but that's my favorite. Yeah. I don't know who sings that. Casimero's. Okay. I, it might be one of those songs where I've heard it, but I don't know the name of it. Yeah, Casimero's and Jay Kauka wrote it. Okay, cool. All right, so favorite place you've ever been? Favorite place that I've ever been? Oof. Um, I'm going to say Napa. San Francisco and Napa. Napa, probably because I have great memories of a trip there with my best friend and her husband and my husband. Oh, it was wine involved by oh any chance. Oh my <laughs> gosh, wine was very involved. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> but we love San Fran. We've always loved 49er fan mm. and we love San Fran, but uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, football season's almost here. Yeah, I know, I'm I can't wait. Football season. I'm uh, a Saints uh, fan. Oh, really? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> hey, come on. 49ers ha- haven't uh, been, I mean, they've been uh, better yes. the last couple of years. But, yeah, I know. They've had know. their share of not so good years. Yeah. <laughs> 49ers. A lot of Hawaii people like the 49ers. Yes. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. a, that's a big thing. Okay. Favorite place to shop? Favorite place to shop. I'm an online shopper. Mm, I'm oh, not shop a shop at Hawaii first. Yes. Hawaiiverse.com. <laughs> and, um, I am very much an online shopper and I like to support a lot of the um, local Instagram, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, businesses. You ever go to the local markets? Like they just had a whole amount of market at the Blaisdell. I haven't gone in a long those time. I so used to, I love, cool. oh yeah. But you know what? I go to those things and <laughs> it's you great. Can't control yes. Yourself, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I like to, sh- I've, I've gotten to the point where I don't really like to go and shop. I will, I know what I want and I'll go and get it. Um, yeah. So a lot of it is so you don't online. Browse. Yes. Yeah, a lot of like it is online. Amazon. It, it's a lot of the local businesses that I struggle oh, nice, with. Nice. Yeah. yeah, well, check yeah. out Hawaiiverse.com. I, we, I, we, I have yeah. and I will, yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you a discount. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay, right on. All right, uh, how, how do you want to be remembered, you know, when it's all said and done? How do I want to be remembered? Yeah. Um, I want to be remembered whether you cross my path for five minutes or five years, um, that something I said or did impacted your life in a positive way, Mm -hmm. that I I was able to make a change Mm -hmm. um, or change your mindset or change something about our time together in a positive way, that I was able to affect it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, you've affected my life and the listener's life for the last hour or so. Thank so you. And you as well. Home. I am very <laughs> impressed with uh, what you've done here. And like I told you the other day, it's like just from speaking with you in January to now, how things have grown for mm-hmm. you and how it's evolved. I'm very, very impressed and happy for you. Yeah, mahalo. I mean, mahalo for keeping us around and letting us do this. I mean, yes. we wouldn't be able to with, without the support of Summit Media. No, we're happy to help in any yeah. way. It's cool. It's, uh, it feels like a like a real family over here. Even you know, getting closer with Min. Right, since, you know, right, start of right. Yeah. End of last year, you know, he's yeah. been such a he's big great. help. He's great. He's great. Yeah, I actually got a present for him after this. So. Oh, awesome, <laughs> awesome. Right on. And Very I just good. want to say mahalo for you know taking time and coming, mm-hmm. making the walk over here, <laughs> and you know opening up and sharing your story mm-hmm. with us and giving your perspective on some other you know important topics that we have here in Hawaii. So, Thank you yeah, for having me. Model. Where can we find you? What are, if you want to be found? I'm not sure. You, I know you're very low key. You're like, yeah, I'm no. sad, I don't want to come on the podcast. And I'm like, no, you got to come on. I know. <laughs> it's okay. We made it through. Yeah. Um, social media. Mm-hmm. PTWO is uh, my IG. Mm-hmm. And then Patty O'Toole Pony Moy on Facebook. Okay. Sounds good. Yes. All right. Well, mahalo, Patty, for joining us on the Hawaiiverse podcast. Check us out on Hawaiiverse.com, the best place to support local. Spread aloha, be kind to one another, and mahalo for listening to us today. New episodes every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host, Kamaka, and you'll hear me next time on the Hawaiiverse podcast. Ah, hui ho. Mm-hmm.